Hey everyone, I thought I'd uh, show you a little uh, circuit I threw together here, breaking out the Arduino and uh, playing around with something called a digitally controlled oscillator. And there is the waveform of it on the screen right there. You can see a nice sawtooth wave kind of flashing along there. That's I think at about 58 megahertz or so that I calculated. I kind of ballparked all this when I put it together. But what's happening is that there's a capacitor there that's getting charged by a voltage which is just coming from my power supply here. So power supply is just feeding through that resistor there um, into uh, this capacitor. And, the, and then the capacitor goes to ground, but before we get to the capacitor, we have a transistor there. And what the transistor is doing is that is uh, getting a pulse from the Arduino. So the Arduino is pulsing at the frequency I want the sawtooth to be at. And that uh, switches the, capacitor, the transistor on, which drains the capacitor very quickly. Hence, you get that nice ramp up and then a very quick reset, and then it ramps up again and then very quickly resets. This has the advantage that the frequency of the oscillator is independent of any analog circuitry. And if you want to see my code, well, there it is. Two lines and there isn't even anything in the loop. All that does is it turns on a timer one and then it sets a PWM on pin nine for one duty for one out of 1,024 duty cycles. So you get 10 bits to define the duty cycle. I'm I'm having it make a very very small pulse on that duty cycle. And the 10,000 I think is is microseconds or something. I don't know exactly what that means. It's just it sets the frequency. But uh, right now. I have, uh, this is with it set to 20,000, but I'm gonna show you a phenomenon what happens when I go ahead and upload 10,000. I'm gonna double the frequency and I'm gonna show you something that happens. Okay, I've now uploaded the sketch with double the frequency. And one of the things you've probably noticed is the amplitude is lower. And that brings up one of the disadvantages of a DCO is Basically what's happening is the voltage which is feeding in through that resistor there is controlling the slope of that up, of the upward part of the ramp wave. And if you are resetting that capacitor at a different speed, this capacitor here, if you start resetting that at a different speed, um, the slope stays the same. And yet it's resetting at a higher speed. So you uh, basically you reduce your amplitude if you increase your frequency. And the solution to that would be to use a D to A converter from the microprocessor and have it change the output voltage going to the capacitor based upon the frequency it's also feeding it. So if you've ever been curious about different ways you can make oscillators, the DCO is a really interesting and as you can see, very easy to prototype way to do it. Now from here, my interest would be in making this voltage controlled probably with an A to D converter on the, on the other side of the uh, microcontroller. And also from here you would want to uh, lower the impedance of the output so that you know it can drive a load. And also you would want to uh, maybe have some wave shaping circuitry so you could make pulse waves. Anyway, that's about it for this quick experiment. I'm definitely going to continue with these experiments though because I think these things are pretty cool. So. Anyway, have a good one. Bye.